Hey, it's Brian Barron of the uh, student pastor at First Baptist Enterprise, and, and today is Tuesday, and Tuesday, it's Tuesday of Holy Week or Passion Week, uh, whichever one you want to use, and it's the week leading up to Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. Uh, you know, crucifixion being on Good Friday and resurrection being on uh, Easter Sunday morning. And uh, so all of our staff, we're all taking turns talking about uh, what's happening each day during Holy Week. And so today I'm going to be talking about Tuesday. But in order to understand Tuesday, you have to look back at Monday. And Monday, Jesus, uh, the triumphal entry uh, on Sunday, Monday into Jerusalem, and he spends time in Jerusalem. And, and what he does on Monday is he goes into the temple, into his father's house, and he cleanses the temple of money changers and people that are using the temple as a marketplace. And he says that, that that's not what my father's house should be about. My father's house should be uh, a house of prayer, not a house of thieves or a house where people are making a profit off of selling uh, doves and, and, and sacrifices for the temple. So on Tuesday, Jesus travels back into, into Jerusalem, and we find this in, in Mark chapter 11. Uh, Monday is at the beginning of the chapter, and, and, and Tuesday is at the end, and we see that Jesus goes uh, back into Jerusalem, and he goes back into the temple, and the Pharisees and Sadducees uh, and scribes, the Jewish religious leaders, are angry. Uh, even the day before when he had ransacked the temple, uh, they even at the end of that passage, it says, we were looking, we're, we want to look for a way to kill Jesus because we're tired of him. We need to get him out of the picture. And so on Tuesday, they approach Jesus and they ask him the question, uh, under whose authority are you doing these things? So who has given you the power to cleanse the temple? Who has given you the power to make the claims that you're making? Uh, who has who has given you that? Like we don't understand where where is this coming from? You know, and, and in my article I, I write that it's a lot like um, a referee, um, you know, in a coach in a football game, and the coach not agreeing with the referee's call with his the the with him exercising his authority, so he throws the red challenge flag, and uh, where they have to stop and review the play, and that's essentially what the Pharisees are doing here. They're challenging Jesus's calls. They're saying, "Hey, um, we don't agree that you're making." You're, you're making the right call. We don't agree that you have the authority to make the claims and do the things that you're doing. And so Jesus stops and looks at them and he asks them, instead of allowing them to question him, he questions them in return. And he says, who, I'm going to ask you a question. Who gave John the authority to baptize people? What is it? Was it man's authority or was it God's authority? And the Pharisees aren't just stumped, but they know that they can't answer either way. Because if they answer that John baptized with God's authority, with heavenly authority, then they legitimize Jesus as the Messiah, as the one that God sent. And they know if they say that John baptized with the authority of man, that they will anger the crowd of people in the temple because the people think that John is a prophet, which he is a prophet, but they don't want to make the crowd angry. So they can't make the crowd angry and they can't legitimize Jesus. So they look at Jesus and say, I don't know. And Jesus looks back at them and says, and neither will I answer you because you didn't answer my question. And Jesus continued on. You know, guys, for us, we know that in the Great Commission, it says, and all authority on heaven and on earth has been given to me. So that answers the question, who gave Jesus this authority? Well, God the Father did. And, and it's that same authority that we operate under now in his name where it says, go into all the world and make disciples, baptizing people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You know, it's the same. Our mission statement at First Baptist Enterprise is we exist to glorify God by making disciples of all nations. And the same authority that Jesus had in doing the things that he did in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the same authority that he gives us to go into the world in his name and share the gospel.